In the previous section, Part 1 of Section 250.24, we covered the regulations concerning the connection of the grounding electrode conductor in premises wiring. Now, in this video, we will delve into the code's guidelines regarding grounding connections on the load side and the requirement for an unspliced main bonding jumper at the service disconnect. Hello everyone welcome to Codesultant channel. Section 250.24b, previously in Section 250.24a5, pertains to load side grounding connections. According to this section, it is prohibited to connect a grounded conductor to typically non-current carrying metal parts of equipment, equipment grounding conductors, or reconnect it to the ground on the load side of the service disconnecting means, unless otherwise allowed in this article. Why is it prohibited? Regrounding at the load side of the service disconnect is not allowed because it introduces parallel paths for neutral current on the load side. When the grounded conductor, typically the neutral, is connected to the panel enclosure or any conductive metal components of electrical equipment at the load side of the service disconnect, it leads to the flow of neutral current into unintended paths such as metal piping, cable trays, cable sheets, and similar pathways. This flow of neutral current is commonly referred to as an objectionable current. Further, all grounded conductors must be isolated from any contact with metal enclosures and equipment grounding conductors in the electrical system. This ensures that if a phase to neutral fault occurs in a feeder or branch circuit, the greatest amount of fault current will return to the grounded neutral conductor, which will facilitate a faster opening of the overcurrent device protecting the circuit. If there are multiple paths that fault current can take because grounded neutral conductors have been connected to equipment grounding conductors downstream of the service disconnect, then the amount of return fault current on the grounded conductor will be diminished and spread out among the other parallel paths. A lesser amount of returning fault current on the grounded neutral conductor results in a slower opening time of the overcurrent device installed to protect against the fault condition. When does the code allow load side grounding connections? According to the informational note provided in this section, there are three situations in which grounding connections of the neutral conductor downstream of the service are considered acceptable. Section 250.30 pertains to separately derived systems, where the neutral may be permitted or required to be grounded beyond the service. For instance, in a system where voltage is stepped down by a transformer, establishing a grounding connection to the secondary neutral is necessary. Although this connection occurs on the load side of the service, it does not qualify as an exception since separately derived systems lack a common conductor with the service supplied system. Section 250.32 pertains to connections at separate buildings or structures. Exception 1 of Section 250.32b1 allows for installations that comply with previous editions of the code, which permitted such connections. In these situations, the grounded conductor that runs with the supply to the building or structure is allowed to serve as the ground fault return path, subject to specific code requirements. These requirements include the absence of an equipment grounding conductor with the feeder, the absence of continuous metallic paths bonded to the electrical system in both buildings, and the installation of ground fault protection of equipment not located at the service. 250.142 for use of the grounded circuit conductor for grounding equipment. Exception 1 of Section 250.140b pertains to the frames of ranges, wall-mounted ovens, counter-mounted cooking units, and clothes dryers under specific conditions permitted for existing installations by 250.140. In these cases, it is permissible to connect these appliances to the grounded circuit conductor, provided that certain code requirements are met. These requirements include the following. 1. The supply circuit is either a 120 240ths volt, single phase, three wire system or a 208 Y, 120 volt system derived from a three phase, four wire, Y connected system. 2. The grounded conductor used is not smaller than 10 AWG copper or 8 AWG aluminum. 3. The grounded conductor is insulated. 4. The grounding contacts of receptacles provided as part of the equipment are bonded to the equipment. Section 250.24C, Main Bonding Jumper, in a grounded system, an unspliced main bonding jumper must be utilized to establish a connection between the equipment grounding conductors and the service disconnect enclosure, and the grounded conductor within the enclosure for each service disconnect is described in section 250.28. An example of an unspliced bonding jumper is the strap-type bonding jumper. 
The illustration demonstrates how the strap type bonding jumper is connected by attaching one end of the strap to the neutral bar, thereby establishing the bonding connection. Another example is the green screw, which serves as another type of unspliced main bonding jumper. By screwing down the green screw, it effectively bonds the panel board enclosure. In situations where a grounded system has multiple disconnecting means at the service equipment, each separate service disconnecting means requires a main bonding jumper to establish connections between the grounded service conductor, the equipment grounding conductor, and the service equipment enclosure. The size of the main bonding jumper in each enclosure is determined according to the guidelines outlined in 250.28 D. 1. In exception number 1. When there are multiple service disconnecting means present in an assembly that is listed for use as service equipment, it is required to have an unspliced main bonding jumper that connects the grounded conductors to the enclosure of the assembly. An example of such a listed assembly is a switchboard, where the sections are interconnected both mechanically and electrically. Additionally, an equipment grounding bus is installed in contact with each section. Due to the electrical continuity of the equipment, it is permissible to install a single main bonding jumper between the neutral bar and the enclosure. Thank you all for watching.